welcome to the Moving On, Moving Up Hangout, the IMTS Plus video production series. And I'm here in Austin, Texas at the Palmer Event Center for the Form Next Forum, where additive manufacturing innovation takes shape. And we're hanging out with some great people here today who have been at the show. Some of them have been talking, some of them have just been walking the show. So why don't each of you take a moment to introduce yourself? No, we're gonna start down the train. Yep. Hi, no, I'm also with ASTV, please help me. Hey Megan, thanks for having me today. Alec Forsar, our enterprises. Thanks for having me as well. Uh, Stephanie Bonfiglio with I3D Manufacturing. I'm the, I'm the Director of Integration and Client Relations. Uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm Jacob Nectarline, the President of Elementum 3D. So thanks, Paul, for you for joining me. And I know this was kind of put together at the last minute, and I'm really excited to have each and one of you. So I want to get a little bit more intimate with you all on some of these questions. And what I'm curious to know about is how did each of you really get started in this industry? Because additive manufacturing is like the baby of all the manufacturing processes. And when it first came out, I didn't think it was going to be something that it would actually be where it's at today. So how did you get interested in additive manufacturing and how, what did your pathway look like to where you are now? Yeah, I knew nothing about 3D printing. So I started a company <laughs> um, <laughs> and that's how you learn things, right? Right. You jump into it. Um, yeah, so bought a plastic 3D printer to learn how to do it and had an idea and jumped in. So I came up in the uh, startup ecosystem, like developing with Joom Technologies in the Boston area. We are just always loved an inter interface between software and hardware. Okay. So from that, I uh, found myself at Desktop Metal, going back a couple of years now, and uh, had an incredible experience there, learned a lot, and then uh, and then you dawned to start an install got a lot with you there. Yeah, and then my whole story is kind of falling into this through luck. <laughs> so, I'm an engineer by trade, uh, and my senior year, I was in Vermont, and I connected with Burton Snowbjord to a lead tire for Reedy Pinty Lau. And so we did our project with that, and I fell in love with technology. So you'd have to 3D print snowboards? Buy new parts. <laughs> like goggles, and they're doing helmets. And so I became a technician, pretty much, just helping out within the lab, and then spent hours talking with my Matt for mission about 3D printing. And that is just the entry into this entire world of what we're all now in, you know, this ecosystem. That's really cool. Well, I'm going to pick on you first, Allie. So you have been, your company has been in the news and out of a manufacturing, like we're new aluminum manufacturing process. So I'm interested in to know, like, <clears throat> what's so unique about that process and how is it a game changer for the industry? And what sort of doors is it opening up for businesses? Yeah, thanks for asking, Megan. So yeah, we um, ultimately, uh, when we set out to found Alloy, we listened to the last of the base, uh, and they made the story real is that uh, high throughput series production is the goal. Um, and um, uh, we think that a fully dense 60, 61 aluminum part is the path forward. So in order to get to higher production volumes, uh, we looked for ways to reduce the cost of the process, simplify the process. Um, uh, wherever possible. Um, so, so we develop the technology for where. Uh, we now make parts, uh, like I said, that are very dense aluminum and are, that are cost competitive, uh, which are shown in factory or a per part basis. Is that like a dream process then for like anybody in aviation or aerospace? Like where, where is aluminum being mostly printed in what age? Yeah, so uh, I mean, aluminum and 6060 one aluminum is ubiquitous. It's everywhere, which is a fantastic opportunity. Also, a bit of a challenge is a startup thinking about where to focus first. Right. Um, but uh, we've had some great success in a couple of different industries. Um, the aluminum casting industry is a $75 billion industry uh, global, so it really just is everywhere. Um, but we've had particular success working with our industrial uh, partners or heavy equipment as well on some automotive. Um, so we're thinking about uh, with a cost reduction in the process, what can you do to get to higher volumes? Nice. And speaking of aluminum, Jacob, I'm going to pass this question out to you because back in May at Rapid TCT, you guys debuted debuted one of your proprietary alloys. Wow, I need more coffee. <laughs> um, so can you get more into that and discuss yeah. how that has been since the debut and where we can see so that? kind of entering the business? So we, we've been developing new and different aluminum alloys for all sorts of different applications. And so at Rapid, we released the 5083 Ram 5. Um, and we have a number of customers who are trialing that material. Big advantage of that was you didn't have to heat treat it. So you oh, get okay. strengths that are up, you know, 
in the 7000 series aluminum strength range, you don't have to heat treat it at all. It comes out as, um, uh, as printed. Now again, there's, there's application space. It's not for high temperatures. So our next alloy that we'll be releasing probably early next year is an 8009 aluminum. Okay. Um, for way higher temperature applications. So for engine components, that sort of thing, for, for even pushing the limits further than we have with our 2024. So um, some really ex exciting things in aluminum and uh, a couple of big new things in copper as well. So I'm gonna pick on you. <laughs> Your mantra is we do powder right. So. What are some of the things that make i3D MFG unique compared to other companies that might be specializing in um, DMLS? Sure. Um, so we are we since inception we've been production based, and so we are able to make the powder work by being we have open site licenses, and we've had that on all of our machines since 2014. So we're able to use the make the powder work by working with a focus on production manufacturing, whether that's on the part geometry, material properties, whatever we need to do. And we've worked with Elementum on specific parameters or custom parameters for customer base. So that's how we make the powder work. And just the breadth of all the powders that we have in stock. We, we have over 16 powders that we use across our machines. So I want to get insight from all of you. What, how would you pitch additive manufacturing to really attract the next generation into coming and being part of this workforce? Like, what would be your pitch to them? I mean, I think there's a couple of ways that we're already doing it. I mean, there's already a number of people, even in high schools and middle schools, who work with 3D printers. How many of those same people work with a CNC machine? Almost not. Um, yet there's a desperate need for machinists. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not a need-driven thing, it's an interest-driven thing. And so because this next generation in particular are growing up around computers and, and CAD modeling and all of that, that's what they know and understand well, and it's also what they get excited about. And so I think naturally it comes easier uh, to promote and recruit the next generation into additive versus something that we still need as an industry, which is machinists. And, and I think um, good and bad there. That's a really... Yeah, um, we work with some universities in doing some help with their curriculum. Um, there's a school out in Oregon that we go and do like a symposium class and talk about additive. They actually have an add, uh, additive engineering degree um, program and so we do a class every year, talk to them about you know adding what kinds of softwares to the curriculum, manufacturing processes and stuff like that. Um, and then also working with the universities on like Formula E components. So that's really fun. That gets them super excited. Um, we did one with University of Washington and they were, as far as they know, they were the first to do like a brake component in the United States. So they've had a lot of competition from Europe and so they were really, really proud of that. And just the excitement on their faces is great. Nice. Well, I want to thank all of you for joining me today on this Moving On, Moving Up uh, Hangout series. I really appreciate all of your answers and your input. So before I let you guys go, I want to give you the opportunity to kind of do your shameless plug. So if anybody has questions <laughs> about your companies or they want to partner with you or learn more about what you do, where should they go and how can they connect with you? No, yeah. why don't you start? Yeah, so follow us on LinkedIn. It's definitely the first one. Um, you can, all of us here are on LinkedIn for sure. Yeah, reach out. You ask questions and then learn about the technology for additive manufacturing and then Powder Bed Fusion. So phase3d.com or phase3d, phase-3d.com is our website um, or check us out like yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, Alloy Enterprises at a high absolute put and all the minimum guys has to make fully dense you know, parts for production and use. Uh, so we'd love to see customers, uh, parts, uh, challenges and, and then uh, you can find us at alloyenterprises.com or have met to follow us on LinkedIn. So um, i3D Manufacturing is a service provider. Um, we only do metal 3D printing, and you can follow us on LinkedIn. Um, our website's uh, i3dmfg.com, and we'd love to talk to you about our capabilities and what materials we print in and what platforms we have and how we can help you. We focus on uh, space and defense industries and open to see what DMLS can do. And then uh, elementum3d.com is generally the best way to contact us. Um, you know, you could reach out directly to me, Jacob at elementum3d.com, if you like. Um, happy to help you with new projects 
all sorts of materials, introduced you to a lot of the great people making <laughs> the parts and going into production on those components. So um, happy to you know kind of connect you. And if we don't have the right solution, I will direct you to the people who do. So awesome. Well, I want to thank all of you for joining us on this Moving On, Moving Up series. Again, if you are interested in seeing more of this series, go to the IMTS Plus channel. Where are we moving on and moving up next? Who knows? Stay tuned to find out.